Number one, you want to find the volume um, of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the curves and the line. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll draw these curves and lines. Um, so we have the curve 2 minus um, 2 minus half x. So this is a straight line that is sloping downwards um, whose y-intercept is 2. So 1, 2, 1, Two. So the y-intercept for this curve is over here, and for every x, it uh, it lowers down one half. So we'll go two one. Yeah. So this is this is our line. Um, it should go something like this. So this is y is equal to 2 minus 1 half x. Now let's draw uh, the other one. So we have the line y equals 0, which is, uh, no, sorry, that my bad, that is x equals 0. So we have the line y equals 0, which is over here, right? This is the line y equals 0. And then we have the line x is equal to 1. So x is equal to 1 is over here. This is x is equal to 1. And then we have x is equal to 2. This is our x is equal to 2. So our sh our area between these uh, these curves is this yellow area over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, revolve it around the x-axis using um, using a disk, right? So the way that we do it is we're we're considering a disk that goes something like here, and then we're adding up all these disks. So we're adding um, we're adding smaller and smaller disks, right? So over here we would have a disc this size and over here we would have a disc this size yeah so this is actually it's going to kind of make a cone um this was a pretty terrible drawing so maybe i'll just leave the kind of the representative disc that is going to be revolved around here right so when we're finding the volume what we're really doing is we're summing up all these discs all the way from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 2, right? Um, and you can think that these disks, uh, the cross sections, are being uh, cut through with this line y equals 0 right in the middle. Um, so it's as if the, the cross sections were coming up on the, on the screen on a different, on a different axis, because now we're going to have volume, so it's going to be in 3D. Um, so this integral, we do have our bounds of integration because we begin at 1 and we end at 2. Um, so we're going to go from 1 to 2. Now we're summing up all these di the area of these disks. So we're summing up our pi times the radius squared, right? Which is the radius is our, um, our height. But our height changes at every single point. So for example, if I were over here, Right in the beginning, my disk would be bigger. If I were over here, my disk would be smaller. So because the the height of the disk is not fixed, it changes according to the height of an equation. So our r really is going to be the pink line. So 2 minus half x squared times dx. Um, so now before we... Uh, before we integrate it, let's just expand this so it's easier to uh, to integrate it. So this is, and I'll put the pi outside because it's just a constant. So pi times the integral time from 1 to 2. And then we'll just FOIL this. So this is, let's see, 1 quarter x squared minus 2 times 1 half minus 2 times 1 half. Um, so that is minus... 2x and then plus 4 and all of this times 
dx. All right, now we are ready to integrate this. Um, this is pi times, this is x cubed over three times four, so over 12, minus uh, two times x squared over two plus four x, and all of this evaluated from one to two. Um, all right, so let's let's plug in our boundaries so that we can evaluate this. So this is pi times the upper boundary 2, so 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 8 twelfths, minus, this 2 and this 2 cancels, right? So minus 2 squared, minus 4, and then plus 4 times 2 plus 8, and then minus the lower boundary. So minus 1 cubed over 12, so minus 1 12, and then this minus minus becomes a plus, so plus 1 squared, uh, plus 1, and then minus 4 times 1, so minus 4. So when we do our calculation, this is pi times, let's see, 8 over 12 is 2 thirds, minus 4 plus 8, minus 1 over 12, um, plus 1, minus 4, and that should give us 19 over 12. So uh, our volume, our volume is 19 pi over 12 um, cubic cubic units because they don't give us the, the units, right? So that is how we set up our integral. It's just summing up um, the area of these disks, which are described by pi r squared. And then um, just realizing that the, the r, it changes. It's not a constant r. So its height is described by this line over here.